still waiting for some parts to finish this inverter automation project up, but in the meantime I've cleaned up the internal wiring. I've got everything so it tucks inside. So the main thing is the power relay here. This is a 15 amp double pole, double throw relay. And I've got this permanently mounted now. I had to shave the DIN rail mounts off the bottom of the relay socket. It sticks up quite a ways and it was going to hit the top of the case. So one thing with this relay, when I was testing it in the previous video, I had the coil contacts here were hardwired to the input power. So that's going to be different in the final version. So what I've done is brought that blue wire there over to a connector and I will be using my Arduino relay to turn power on and off to this blue wire which is for the coil and then the other side is hooked to the neutral. That relay will only be on when I'm running the inverter from grid power. Having that relay there allows me to turn this inverter between AC power coming off of the grid or running off of the battery bank, running off of DC power. And the really key thing, it might not have been clear in the previous video, but having this relay here and especially this normally closed contact basically duplicate this on off switch here which I added for the charging circuit so this relay enables or makes possible the automatic UPS mode switching if you're running on grid power here and then the power were to fail this thing will automatically switch over to battery power and having that relay there keeps that function while still allowing me to independently control the charging. So that's a key thing because what it did, that UPS mode switching from grid power to battery power is very hard to do because you've got to do it very quickly, less than one cycle, so 16 milliseconds. And the problem is this inverter has all that circuitry on it to do that. If I had to do it myself, I've got to switch quicker than this thing switches. But if I put that relay right there in that normally closed contact, that makes the switching automatic. And so all of the UPS mode switching is handled by the inverter as it was designed to do. So that relay solves a really hard problem getting that UPS mode switching, but it creates a problem in that switching from DC power back to AC power doesn't work. And so what I've done here is I've added an extra connector here. So this is where the wires from that relay hook up. I also connect to my switch, so I still have manual control. So that's the three wires here. I've got the charging circuit. I've got my relay over there. I've got my manual switch, and then I'm going to add a fourth wire to these two terminals, and that's going to go up to my Arduino relay module, and I'll be able to use the relay on the Arduino to duplicate this switch. So when I switch from DC power back to AC power, what I need to do is close this switch, turn that relay on, and then open this switch. These two connectors are for the charging control relay up on the Arduino. And then down here, I've got two extra connectors for the line and neutral off of the incoming power. So there's one last feature I need to add to this, is I've, I need to detect whether there's good AC power on this incoming line or not. I'll be building a little circuit board that's going to monitor the status of this incoming power. And the reason I need to know that is I'm going to have three operating modes on this device. One mode will be what's called AC mode, where I'm just taking AC power in, going through the transfer switch, and then I'm sending AC power out. And then the second mode will be DC mode, where I'm running off of the batteries and generating AC power 
out here. And then the third mode is what I call UPS mode. And the way you get to UPS mode is if you're running off of AC power and the power fails, this thing will automatically switch to battery power. But what I need to know is when does the AC power come back because I'm going to want to switch back to AC power if the power failed. Oh, and right there my freezer kicked on. So there was a little bit of a buzz there when it picked up the load of the freezer and we're now pulling 210 watts. And then I'll probably drill a second hole in the cover here and run my 120 volt AC signals through this hole. I'll run all of the low voltage DC signals through the other hole just so I keep the low voltage and the high voltage separated. There'll be three main functions that this Arduino will be doing up here. So the, the main function will be handling the switching. So turn this thing on and off, turn the uh, charging on and off, turn the DC power on and off. And then the second set of functions, I'm going to add a 2.4 gigahertz radio transceiver here and that Arduino will then be able to talk to my home automation system and the home automation system can tell the, the Arduino to turn this thing into DC mode or AC modes. Just as an example I could say at sunrise turn the AC power off and run this thing on DC power and then at sunset turn this from DC power back to AC power and that'll be really easy to do because I've already got logic on my home automation system doing that for some other loads. So this device is going to end up being on my home automation network. It'll be a Z-Wave device and I can just tell this thing to turn on and off just like a light bulb. So that's the reason I want to automate this. So that'll be the second level of function is the Arduino will communicate to my home automation system and will be told what mode to run in, either run in AC mode or DC mode and then this thing internally will handle any power outages automatically. So ideally I'm going to plug this into the wall and it's going to be plugged into the batteries and it'll just sit there and run during the day. It'll run off battery power at night it'll run off grid power and if there's a power outage it'll automatically switch and then probably the final thing I I'll do up here if I have the main thing is I need to see how much memory all of this code is going to take can I fit it all in the Arduino but if there's room and I have time I've also got a second display so I have this thermometer here but I want to also add an RPM display for the fan because I'd like to be able to see what speed the fan is running at. The problem is my little blue LED, it looks okay on camera, but it, it doesn't work in real life. But the only time you can see anything going on is at night, and at night, this is usually off. So I figure, you know, the Ar Arduino can monitor this fan RPM and just tell me how fast the fan is running, which would be kind of useful. And then the other thing I probably do, it's just literally one wire and one line of code, is to read the battery voltage. So I can have the Arduino read the lithium battery voltage coming into the inverter. It can feed that into my home automation system so I can know, hey, if the battery's below 14 volts, you know, switch this thing back to AC power. Anyway, yeah, I got parts on order. Everything's been shipped, but now you just have to wait. Anyway, I figured I'd get all of this permanent wiring done in here, so I've got everything tucked in out of the way, and I think the case will go back down over the top. But yeah, I just wanted to show you the progress. At least I've got this guy back uh, running now. I've got, a, got enough wires hooked up. Even without having the Arduino here, this thing still works. So even if the Arduino fails, this thing will still run as a power inverter. But yeah, the key is that 
relay right there that does all the magic doesn't seem like it does much but I've been working on this for about five years now and putting that relay in was the final piece of the puzzle because that that did all of the hard stuff for me so everything else is just switching between modes right now I just have to get that part written up and then the rest of it is uh, just grabbing the my sensors code and sticking an Arduino on there, burning the firmware in it, and get it up and running. So I gotta prototype all that first before I go and put it on here. So stay tuned for that. I'll give you an update, but otherwise I gotta put the cover back down, get this thing back sealed up so the cooling fan works a little better. And as always, thanks for watching.